Muslim mob attempts to kill Christian for merely sharing a blasphemous text. This is freaking crazy. In May, Rhonda Yau uh, Jatau, a Nigerian Christian health worker, received a WhatsApp message denouncing the horrible murder of a university student, Deborah Emmanuel Yakubu, who was lynched and burned after being accused of blasphemy against Islam. After learning about the tragic death of Deborah, Rhonda shared the message with her colleagues through WhatsApp to raise awareness. However, the Muslims interpreted this message as an act of blasphemy and went out on a hunt to kill her. When Muslim mobs surrounded and attacked her house, the Nigerian sec secret police from the Department of State Services arrested her and whisked her away. Jatau's lawyer, Joshua Nasara, said that since the arrest, Mrs. Jatau has been confined in prison over false allegations of blasphemy and charged with, quote, inciting public disturbance, exciting contempt of religious creed, and cyberstalking. The charges state that Jatau disrespected many religious figures of Islam and the entire Muslim community in a WhatsApp group with the, quote, intent to cause a religious crisis. Um... She has been held incommunicado for more than four months since her arrest on Friday, May 20th, with numerous illegal and intentional delays in her court proceedings. So let's just think about this for a second. According to the reports that I have read, her message, her crime is sharing a message that's saying, hey, Lynching a woman for blasphemy is bad. Condemning condemning the death, condemning the death of a woman who was stoned to death and set on fire for alleged blasphemy. There are people that say that that with Deborah, the first woman, what happened to her was that she rejected a Muslim dude and in response he accused her of blasphemy. That's an allegation I've read. Okay. And then that's why they stoned her and then burnt her they tried to burn down the school that she was in on her university campus okay so that's what happened to deborah so this woman rhonda receives a message from someone about that saying that this is wrong condemning it she allegedly shared this message to raise awareness with her colleagues in response to saying hey guys Lynching a woman for blasphemy is bad. The response is to go and try and lynch her. Well, I don't understand. Is that really the only thing in the message? How is that blasphemy? That's not even. I don't know. Are I haven't sure been able to find a else? copy of the message, right? I'm only reading secondary or whatever reports that this is the contents of the message. I really, I can't know for certain, right? Just like full transparency. But let's say the actual message was going full blown, calling out Muhammad, full fuck Islam. Like he's, you know, what did he do to Aisha? Like, you know, all the stuff that people don't want to admit that is actually in Islam, but it is and when people say it suddenly that's blasphemous, but a Salafi scholar can say it. That's not blasphemous. Anyways, like, Let's say she actually did go full tilt, most hardcore blasphemous you can go. Regardless, that doesn't justify anything that happened to her. I know, I know, but like, I'm still shocked that the message was like, yo, they were, they lynched this woman, that's bad. And they were like, blasphemy. I, the, the message must have been like something else about the, like, oh, Islam and is bad because it endorses this or something like that it couldn't have just been i mean they wouldn't even muslims wouldn't call that blasphemy it's it really hard like, to tell because most yeah. of the places that are reporting on what happened to rhonda are like christian news services and hmm. so i get a very specific kind of information if that makes sense i haven't been able to find any sort of account of literally what was said what was shared and because of this mere accusation against her, when people went to go lynch her, she was the one that got arrested. Oh, yeah. The government and she's been detained illegally for four months now. 
Yeah, so there, so the, there's people who want to lynch her, and the government shows up, the police show up, and between the people who want to lynch a lady and the lady who's been accused of blasphemy, they arrest the lady, and she's in jail. Like, not the people who wanted to lynch her. Yeah. She's in jail. Mm-hmm. In Nigeria, who's not even an Islamic country. It's half Islamic. This is what you get in a half Islamic country. It's half Christian. Half, like what about the other half? The other half that's Christian is not going to come like it. This is our, like, what? Like, how According come to one different? report I was reading today, N- Nigeria is the number one country for killings of Christians. Yeah, I mean, is the is the other half that is Christian just gonna take this? Like, what is happening there? Like, do they have no authority in the government? Well, is remember government? we talked about yesterday how even in the areas, the southern states that are more Christian dominated, even they experience high rates of Christians and pastors being kidnapped and murdered for the sake of bolstering the kidnapping economy. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, Nigeria is like I was very hopeful about Nigeria. I don't know what the hell. Yeah. Nigeria was Oh, D is bringing up a good point. D, who I consider our, our third co-host just off camera. <laughs> she is saying, "Well, remember there were riots condemning the arrests of Deborah's murderers." So, in response to the original woman who was lynched on her college campus allegedly for blasphemy, Instead of, hey, riots and protests against how could you do that to this woman, there were riots when they arrested the people that lynched her. Amazing. This is like Pakistan level. Yeah. And it's not, again, it's not even fully Islamic. It's half Islamic and Islamic Sharia is taking over. Well, I mean, it's, it's complicated by the fact that it's actually legitimized in the court system. Yeah. yeah. But is the court system not going to defend a Christian woman? Like, do the Christians not care there? Like, I don't know. I mean, the, the Christians definitely care, but there have been all these roadblocks within her case. Like, wait, let me pull it up um, so I can remind myself. Basically, so you're not allowed to be held for longer than two months or something without... Um, wait... Ba, 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 ba. Okay. His, her lawyer says that she was detained for two weeks before the charges were placed. After that, she was held incommunicado in prison as Muslim leaders and higher state authorities intentionally postponed her trial. She was detained for a further two months without trial, which is the legal limit. And then an application for her release was filed. However, the application for release was not assigned to any judge until... the the end of that month because the judges were on vacation Mm. and then finally she got assigned to a judge that was not on vacation and um that's when her court cases finally started to proceed a little bit guys do you know of any other atheist channel that is covering stuff like this like these are this is important this is why you subscribe here okay like, this is important. I don't know why, like, other secular or atheist activist people not do not cover stuff like this. We're talking about tensions in Nigeria. It's one of the most populated countries on the planet, okay? And there's tensions between Christians and Muslims in, are increasing. And it's really horrible for the whole world. Nigeria is supposed to be a leading country that picks up Africa's economy for the next couple of decades, okay? True. And, and their whole... The, the, the whole entire ju- judicial system is wacko because of religious bumbo jumbo, right? Like, it's like, you know, you can't have stability enough for a country to grow economically as much as it, its true potential will allow if this is what you're dealing with, you know? And again, it's not, a, you know, people like, oh, your people's lives are being less and you're talking about economy. It, you slower economy costs lives, okay? Like exactly, that's target- one and the same. Yeah, they're the same thing, okay? It's not just about the money. People, be, lifting people out of, out of poverty literally saves their lives, okay? So this is, the stuff is important. Oh, but, and he's bringing up something yeah. important because we just talked about this recently. 
And we, we talked about this on the show a few weeks ago. In August, a Nigerian court of appeal ruled that the Sharia does not violate the country's constitution. Yeah, yeah. Even though they we have a normally that. secular constitution. It's crazy. Yeah, and we people covered recognize that. that a lot of these blasphemy cases are just instances of blackmail or people just settling scores. Like, this is known. I don't know. It makes me so frustrated. Oh, for more clarification on what she said. Okay. Quote, information we obtained from Mrs. Janatu shows that the WhatsApp message she received and shared in her group was for caution against violence and against the use of derogatory language in addressing other people's faith. But that was not the interpretation by the Muslims, Pastor Dano said. And since the occurrence on the incident of May of 2022, there have been ca campaigns by Muslims for Miss Janatu to be killed for blasphemy against Muhammad. I don't know what any of that has to do with Muhammad. We just got a hundred dollar super chat by Secular Sakai. Oh my God. Thank you like, so much, Secular Sakai. Wow. Read that. Oh, he's saying life gets busy for me, but I will always support Atheist Republic's work. Keep the world honest. Keep the world informed. Oh, my God. That is very generous. Thank you. Thank you. He's saying, wow, oh. Sakai. That's a, that's a, that's a, that's very generous. Thank you so much. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you so much. Yeah. Um. In fact, I think we should put that super chat towards something that we are going to be talking about today. I know, right? That's a good yes. idea. Yeah. Yes. 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 Okay. So, um, we we're going to talk about that in the last news. So. Yes, in a few okay. stories, we will reveal it. Um, but we have a, an amazing project that we just started. You can now get the sexiest blasphemous art ever known to mankind for free. Too sexy to show most of it here on YouTube. We draw Muhammad, Hindu goddesses, sexy hijabi art, Jesus, Mother Mary, Japanese God, Greek gods, and much, much more. Click on the link below where it says get our free blasphemous art.